On today's wrestling news, we've got a bunch more WWE releases. Ronda Rousey is writing an adaptation of her own memoir for Netflix. A big WrestleMania announcement is coming soon. And three more wrestlers declare for the King of the Ring. Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? My name is Phil Chambers and I'm joined by Gareth Morgan to talk all things wrestling news. And Salty Sea Dog is here too. Look at that. Mm. Uh, but first up, we have a bunch more uh, releases from WWE. Now, this is all coming from the NXT ranks. And the biggest name of all of these is definitely Drew Gulak. Um, now, it's been a little bit muddy with Drew Gulak in WWE recently. He obviously had the sort of incident with Ronda Rousey where she accused him of grabbing the string of her sweatpants backstage in an interview where she was giving like a kind of example about the sort of culture backstage at WWE. Uh, now, Drew Gulak did respond to this by saying that it was an accident and he was reaching out to shake her hand and accidentally touched it uh, and said he apologised at the time, but then Rousey said that she kind of uh, called him up on it and it was all a bit um, muddy, let's say. Um, but he was also then uh, kind of written off WWE TV. He was a regular on NXT um, at that point, uh, and it was kind of written off because he was in a group called the New Quarter Catch Crew and they went to the D'Angelo family uh, to kind of have them take care of him, I guess, uh, which kind of suggests that he's sleeping with the fishes, I guess, now. Um, but he has been officially released from NXT and removed from the video package and things like that as well. Uh, but it's not just Drew Gulak that has been released in this. We also have uh, Boa, who was the former Yambo Wong, uh, Yambo Wang, sorry, who signed with WWE in September 2016 after a tryout in Shanghai. He last wrestled for them in uh, December of 2023. We have Vlad Pavlenko, a former track star who was part of the 2023 Performance Center class, uh, but never actually wrestled a match on TV. Uh, we have Valentina Faraz, who is the former Rita Rice, who was part of NXT since December 2019, and she hasn't wrestled since December 2023 either. Uh, we have Trey Bearhill, who's the former Triller Book Trot, uh, is a former college bu- uh, football player who wrestled 17 matches from March 2023 to March 2024. We have Kia Saint, the former uh, Harley White, who deb- debuted in May in 2023 and wrestled 13 matches. Uh, last competing in April in 2024. And then we have uh, Julian Baldi, who um, was said to have signed last month, but then never really wrestled a match and was part of the Next Gen series. Uh, we have Emma Diaz, who is a former rugby player, who wrestled just three times from October 23 through to April 2024. She was also part of Next Gen. Uh, we have Daryl Mason, the former amateur wrestler who had never wrestled a match in WWE TV. Keishon uh, LaFleur, the former college gymnast who also never wrestled a match, and Ezekiel uh, Balogun, who was a former college basketball player and was part of the Spring 2023 uh, Performance Center class and never wrestled a match as well in WWE TV. Now, we are kind of used to uh, WWE releases like this coming and going, um, but this is kind of more of a sort of deep roster cut from NXT, as you can see, like a lot of them never actually got on TV. And I mean, when you take a punt on so many people in the performance center and you get so many people through the doors, there's always going to end up being uh, a bunch of cuts like this because not everybody can make it onto TV at the end of the day. Um, so it's kind of an expected thing. Um, and just a sort of bit of a clear out, I guess, from the performance center when you, yeah, when you give so many people a, a shot, not all of them can work out, unfortunately. So it kind of is one of those things that is what it is. Um, But we do have a little bit more about the Ronda Rousey thing. Well, not the Ronda Rousey thing, but just Ronda Rousey in general. Just more on Ronda Rousey because she just seems to be in the news and the headlines an awful (laughs) lot lately. Uh, But this one, this one's quite, really quite fascinating. Uh, Obviously, I'm a bit of a film nerd myself, do a lot of what culture stuff on uh, the main channel, a lot of film TV. And this is a nice little crossover that we've got going on now because Ronda Rousey, according to Deadline, who are reporting this, uh, she has now closed a deal to adapt the script for her own biopic for Netflix. So that, that's that's pretty cool. Like, whatever way you look at that, that's uh, pretty awesome. She uh, This actual like biopic, like the, the screenplay, all of it is based on her memoirs, both of her memoirs, which are My Fight, Your Fight, and Our Fight. And she uh, she co-wrote the memoirs with her sister, Ma- Maria Burns Ortiz. And while the deal with Shernin Entertainment, who are expected to produce this, isn't officially, that's not been like closed yet, that is expected to happen at some point in the future. So a lot of a lot of information on this. It's really quite something. It, it, it was a project that was originally set to go down within Paramount, and that was in 2015 that that was all like, made official. It's going to happen. 
then the studio went through a, like a number of, a number of like regime changes, and when that happened, the rights eventually lapsed, and then Netflix just came in and went, "Yep, yeah, we'll have them. We'll have those. We'll we'll jump on that." And Netflix exact Michelle Evans was apparently a big old fan of Ronda Rousey. They were like, "Yeah, we'll have those. We'll have those rights." And a big part of all this, which is incredible really when you look at it is the fact that Rousey is she's a first time writer really whatever way you look at it and she really dove into the process she was like I want to try and be the absolute best writer that I can be with this and that I'm not just going to throw some things together put Ronda Rousey's name on it and just hope that like a that works as like a publicity stunt or anything like that she really put in the work from the sounds of it and originally for Paramount the script was set to be adapted by Mark Bombach uh, but then after putting in all this work and doing everything else for it, uh, Rousey actually was managed to write this entire screenplay in just seven days. And then she she like threw it out to her agents. They were super impressed. They were like, how has a first time writer done this in seven days? Like, it's a pretty incredible script. And then apparently well, one of the, well, the like really cool things about this is Rousey when they when they were like presenting this to Netflix, like when they when they were bringing it forward to Netflix, like I think they got the producers on board and all that stuff. That when they presented it, they were so so confident in it. They knew it was so special that they actually ripped the front page of the script off. They ripped it off and they presented it to them for this meeting with Netflix. And then once they'd they'd read it, they um they were like, "This is awesome. This is a great script." Like I, I wouldn't I wonder who wrote it. I wonder what like professional writers wrote this thing. And then when they found out it was Rousey, they were like, "Wow, okay, yeah, we'll have this. We'll we'll, we'll have a bit of this." And originally. Originally, when it was conceived, it was thought that she would also star in it. She would also star in the project as herself, really, which is, it's a choice, it's something else. But now sources are saying that she only plans to write the film, like she only plans to be the screenwriter for it. So meetings are set to take place for potential candidates who are going to play Rousey in this movie. So there's an awful lot on this. Like it's a huge big write up the uh, deadline has done on it. So if you really want to just learn a little bit extra, maybe there's some things that I've left out there. Just go and check it out. It's a big old thing. But the exciting part of this is it looks like Rousey's I don't know, it looks like she's a hell of a writer too from the sounds of it. And I'm I'm really intrigued by it. Like she's had a fascinating life and in those memoirs, especially in the follow-up memoirs, a lot of stuff uh, within that which talks about like how she was after she suffered that first loss to Holly Holm, uh, the suicide, like contemplating suicide after that fight, uh, just her history with concussions, loads of stuff, loads of really intriguing stuff that would probably make for a hell of a like well, chapters within a movie, scenes within a movie, all this kind of stuff. So I am, um, yeah, very much. Looking, looking forward to it, but yeah, I just want to see what happens with this. It's gonna be, it's gonna be something else. Yeah, absolutely, it's an interesting one. It's a hell of a story, obviously. Mm. Um, but the fact that she wrote it itself is absolutely great. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that, mm. seeing what that comes out like. Um, but let us know down in the comments who you think should play Ronda Rousey. Mm. Obviously, yeah. Any, any picks? Me. No. You. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. Um, who do I think could play Ronda Rousey? I'm trying to think of somebody who's just like an absolute. Ask kicker. I'd like Emily Blunt. Yeah. Emily Blunt would be pretty cool. I think she might have seen her kick some serious ass in Edge of Tomorrow, things like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That I'm interested in that. Yeah, you let me you let us know down below. I wouldn't know. Yeah, down below. And also, I've been meaning to do this for ages, well, since we got back from Philadelphia. Hmm. But I've not actually told you about this, so this would be quite funny. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's often uh, but shout out uh, shout out to the guy who is shaving his head right now. If if you if you know who you are, we met you in Philadelphia, and he said that uh, every Saturday morning he shaves his head whilst watching our videos. So someone out there right now is just sat shaving his head. It's very strange. Stuff. I do the exact same Shout thing to that guy. Just before we come on, I do it though. I'm just, I'm just, just <laughs> yeah. doing all the news up here. But okay, that's you you've, you've, you know. You've, you've completely altered the way I do these videos forever more now because all I can think of is the guy <laughs> just 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 cannot s- think about it in the same way. Get in the head. Wow. Uh, but speaking <laughs> of WrestleMania, because obviously that was WrestleMania, this, that's the segue. Get it? I See? got it. It's there. It, it's beautiful. Look at the skin. You can expect, supposedly, a big WrestleMania announcement coming from WWE today. Now, this was announced on uh, the commentation, commentation? commentary of SmackDown <laughs> last night. Uh, they said to kind of keep an eye on WWE socials because there's an, announce- an announcement coming about where WrestleMania is going to be. Now, obviously, it's been a little bit strange this time because normally they have the WrestleMania um, sort of venue announced at WrestleMania and they just do it like year by year, mm. tell you where it's going to be the next year. Um, now, it was rumored to be in the US Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, and then it all kind of 
got turned around that that wasn't happening and not quite entirely sure why. Uh, and then there was um, sort of talks from Nick Khan about not wanting to run open air at least stadiums on like the sort of northeast coast again, or at least not in the same time frame. So the potential of either like not running those cities because it was a bit cold in Philadelphia uh, or doing sort of closed stadiums. But then the Minneapolis one is a closed stadium, so surely it's not as bad. Um, or just moving WrestleMania to later on in the year. Um, now then there was rumours of Las Vegas coming in, and apparently there's been, and according to Fightful Select anyway, there's been a big internal push for Las Vegas uh, because of the success of the kickoff show for WrestleMania 40 mm-hmm. that they did there with The Rock and Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. It was a lot of fun. Um, but because of the success of that and also the success of the Super Bowl at the Allegiant Stadium. So there's been a big internal push for Las Vegas. So the big rumour now is WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas. Um, potentially in May, but maybe still in April since it's going to be a lot warmer in Las yeah. Vegas than it was in Philadelphia in April, let's say. Uh, but we will be getting the announcement today. Uh, so yeah, take a look for WWE socials and things like that, I guess, to see what the WrestleMania announcement is going to be. But I'd be well up for a, a WrestleMania in Vegas. But to be fair, I'd be up for a WrestleMania in Minneapolis. I've never been to Minnesota before, so that'd be fun too. Yeah, fun for you, Phil. Shall you, shall you, shall you really enjoy it whilst we're sat here just, just covering it, just holding down the damn foot? I don't know. I mean, for me, I want it to come to England. I want it to come to London just so I can go, just so I can see it. And I know that I think, like, the was it the Mayor of London took to Twitter? Like earlier in like the yeah. month, whatever Sadiq it was, Khan has been saying, "Hey, let's talk." Yeah, uh, well. and he said that he wants to bring like the NBA and the Super Bowl to London as well. I don't, I don't see him getting the Super Bowl. No. <laughs> yeah, but WrestleMania, you never know. But you never know. You never know. Yeah. John Cena did his tease at the Money in the Bank show in London. Yeah, well. It's we just you never know. Stranger things have happened. And speaking of stranger things that could happen, well, let's talk about the King of the Ring because three entrants have now been announced like they, they, they've they've what's the word they've declared they've declared for this so that's why i have notes so i can stop myself looking like an idiot yeah so three people have declared yeah, stop yourself phil <laughs> yeah so <laughs> they yeah they've declared apparently so yeah they, they, they're on smackdown and um yeah we've got la knight la knight declared which i think there's a strong yeah. contender to be fair uh santos escobar Maybe not as much. I can't really see him getting the better of like a gun tour or something like that. Oh, and, and Kamala, Kamala, Kamala Hayes also as uh, Kamala, yeah. Kamala, Kamala Hayes is also going to be a king of the ring. It's going great. <laughs> Tiffany Strands in it as well, apparently. Yeah, so that's it, it's a whole thing that's that's happening. I, I can't see anybody not called Gunter winning this thing. I'm sorry, they're all incredible. They are. They're all lovely, great wrestlers, incredible world class talents, but they're not Gunter. Sorry, I just don't see it happening. So the people who apparently are going to be in King of the Ring. Not apparently, it's been confirmed. I'm just saying words now. So, Drew McIntyre, Gunter, Xavier Woods, LA Knight, Santos Escobar, and Carmelo Hayes are the people that have made it known that they want to be in that that tournament. The Queen of the Ring, we've not had anyone, I don't think, at this point, like declare, so they're going to be in it. But you're expecting that to be a pretty stacked probably field. Probably the night before or something. If they, probably, <laughs> these probably. Things are anything to go by. Yeah, and the hell of a roster as well to choose from. So come on, just, 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 like, just we need equality. Just do, do the same thing you're doing with the men with the women. It's that easy. Come on. Yeah. So I'm excited about this. Love a tournament. Love King of the Ring. I feel like it's in safer hands with Triple H than what it was with the other guy because you just yeah you don't feel like they're just going to make somebody into a king or a queen just have them walk around with a crown on no it's actually going to be it looks like it's going to be for a title shot and it's going to have stakes and it's going to be meaningful we're going back to the old days of the king of the ring and queen of the ring now just not being a, a I don't know a, a little prize silly prize that means you have to alter your gimmick yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a lot of fun when they did it with the uh, Xavier Woods, just because mm. he'd been pushing for King of the Ring for so goddamn long. Mm. So it was just kind of a, a nice thing for Xavier Woods more than anything else. Um, but yeah, I miss the I miss the days of them doing the King of the Ring like specific pay per view where like the people have to wrestle like three times on that. Yeah, pay-per-view. like that was really really good. That felt like it was more of like a an ordeal, like more of a trial kind of thing to actually get the win of the thing. I mean... Rather than sort of the tournament on Raw and SmackDown leading up yeah, to the finals. I, sh- I, should have said, I should have said that, yeah. The tournament begins on Monday, May 6th, uh, continue on Friday, May 10th, and then the finals will be held at the King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring PLE. That's in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, on May 25th. In my head now, I was thinking, oh, they could do... No, they're not doing that. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, fair enough. So I miss that, personally. Personally, I'd bring that back because it just, it just feels more of a... Like, yeah, more of a trial, more of a, of a 
sort of actual tournament if you've got to do it on the same day mm. and then you can tell story long uh, like tournament stories where like someone gets injured in the first round but they've got to keep scrapping through to the finals and then it comes to bite them in the ass in the finals or something it's all good stuff mm. um, but yeah I just love King of the Ring it, uh, tournaments are just easy good TV always fun um, it's yeah it's kind of Hard to screw up a good tournament. Uh, so yeah, I just look forward to it. And yeah, it's got to be King Gunther, surely. And yeah. Queen Tiffy, why not? Queen Tiffy. Wow. Queen Tiffy. Yeah, I can see that. I, I love that. They're going to be famous last words now. It's hard to screw up a good tournament. Well, uh, yeah. that's, that's, <laughs> that's see what good. happens. Uh, but that is it. Thank you very much for joining us for the news today. Uh, you can click this video down below to continue on your YouTube journey. And you can follow us both over on Twitter. You can follow me at Bill My Chambers, And you can follow Gareth at GMorgan04. But most importantly, of course, have yourselves a bloody good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.